My name is Ed Frawley. My wife and I own Learburg, and I want to preface this video that's being put in our social media that this specific video came out of a course, an online course that we produced and that we sell on Learburg.com. The course has over 204 videos, over uh, 20 hours of videotape in this course. This video you're about to watch came out of the course titled Dealing with Dominant and Aggressive Dogs. So if you have an interest in learning about that, go to Learburg.com, go to our university section, and you can read detailed notes about what's in the course. You can see a complete outline of the course. If you have an aggressive dog, our course is going to help you fix your problem. If not fix it, it's going to teach you how to manage your dog's problem. This is a good email too. It's about a woman who takes care of her son's dog when he goes someplace. And it's an 18 month old dog that has been allowed to run, its, run around in the house with no rules and very little management and very little dog training. And in the end, this lady gets dog bit and has had to have stitches. And I've decided to put this in the management section segment in our dominant and aggressive dog course because really the whole thing triggers down to poor management, which is the case if you've been, if you've been in this course, it is a huge thing, a huge problem with most dog aggression is poor management. But we'll just use this as an example. I'm babysitting for my grand dog. I wonder what a grand dog is. For two weeks, he's a three and a half year old chocolate lab who is very unruly and ill-mannered, yet lovable. Now this is after she got bit. He's very submissive when not excited. He's definitely not an alpha dog. Again, I kind of, I kind of have problems with people that say, oh, this dog is an alpha dog, or this dog is a fur baby. No, I'm sorry. At the dog park, he checks out dogs and then pretty much is a loner. The first time I babysat for him, he was 18 months old. We spent the week in private obedience lessons. His family then took him through a six-week course, but never followed up with the training. This dog jumps when excited and mouths you. I'll stop this just for a second because a week of training, a six weeks of training, what does that accomplish? It doesn't accomplish anything if the folks that have the dog don't continue with the training and the training should go on, quite frankly, for the rest of the life of the dog. It doesn't mean that you take the dog out every day and go through a 10 or a 15 minute training session. It means that if you're out walking your dog, you spend a minute, two minutes, doing a little engagement training, doing a few exercises, down sit, whatever, and you move on. And maybe in your walk, you do two or three training sessions that are a minute or two long. People that do obedience training for 15 or 20 minutes a day and they think that's all the dog needs? No, that just makes a dog bored. But if you do reward-based training, the dogs are gonna engage with you. If you teach your dog to engage with you, he's gonna to wanna to be with you, he's gonna want what you have, and what you have either is toy or high-value food rewards. And going back to the high-value food rewards of the toy, the problem is if you use a toy, then you might have with some dogs a problem getting the toy away from them. That's why with some dogs that are a little possessive about their toys, you stick with high value food rewards because you can give them multiple rewards in one short little two minute training session, okay? Yesterday, the dog jumped in the car and wouldn't get back out. So she didn't have, she didn't have the dog on a leash. They allow this dog to go to a dog park, which in and of itself is a terrible idea. Whether people that watch this video or not, they should watch my, videos on our thoughts on dog parks. Great idea, bad, <laughs> a great idea to start with, but a bad idea to try and carry out. I reached in to get him and he bit me. 
at least twice, possibly more, I had to go and get stitches. In the process of pulling my hand out of his mouth, I cut a one inch slash in my hand. My son admitted to me that the dog becomes aggressive and growls at him on occasion, and a few months ago, it did that. Of course, I'm upset. Is there hope for this dog, or do I talk to my son about having the dog put down? Okay, would this dog act like this if it was properly managed? I can't tell you that, because I don't see, I'm not there, I don't see how this dog reacts when it's on leash and it's told what to do. So is poor management a good enough reason for the dog to act like that? And then is that enough reason to put the dog down? I can't answer that. I'm not gonna say yes. You know, this dog, because it has growled at the, at the sun in the past, I'm sorry, the dog should have a muzzle on. The dog should learn to wear the muzzle. And the dog, when it gets into a car and it's outside, should have a leash on. And don't take the dog to the dog park, take it for walks. And when you take it for a walk, do a little bit of engagement training with them. I'll tell you this, doing engagement training with a dog taxes their mind. It's as good of an exercise to make them mentally think about something as it is to walk them around the block a couple times. Because when you walk around the block a couple times, you can stop for a minute or two and do a little engagement and having a good time and say it, reward, 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 multiple rewards for doing one exercise, not one. Turn the reward into, a, into an event, not just give them one reward and the dog learns one reward. Okay, that's all done. That's a pretty interesting thing over there. I'm not gonna get another reward, so why should I pay attention? That's not the way you do it. You give them five rewards, then you give them three, then you give them one, then you give them four. So they never know when the end of the reward event is done. That's how you reward a dog. And they would get as much with this dog by doing that walking around. And you can get muzzles that you can pass food through the front. I'm not sitting here trying to sell muzzles. It's up to you if you want to use a muzzle on your dog, but I will tell you this. Anybody that has a dog, aggressive dog, should be having their dog wear a muzzle. And we give away a free 20-minute video, and I say this in a lot of these videos. We give away a video teaching people how to measure a muzzle. Because it doesn't do you any good to get a crappy muzzle that comes off real easy, or one that's too big that a dog can go like that and flip it right off. Because a lot of these... A lot of these websites that are these groups that are these muzzle people get these huge muzzles that they put on their dog because they think they need to be big enough to pant. Bad information. Nice people that don't have the experience on working in muzzles. I'm sorry. Then in closing, if my advice to this woman would be, if your son is not going to step up and do what needs to be done with this dog, which is teach, get a muzzle for him, a good muzzle, teach this dog that it stays on leash, take the dog and start to do more serious reward-based training with him. If he won't do that, don't take care of this dog anymore. I mean, just don't do it. I'll, be, I'll make a confession here. I won't take care of my son's dog when he goes on vacation, or when they have to go someplace. I make him take him to a kennel because he won't listen to us about what this dog needs to do. And his dog needs some serious management. And his dog can be a little reactive, and he won't have the dog wear a muzzle when he should be wearing a muzzle. So if I was her, I'd say, here's the rules. You're going to do these things, or you're going to go and spend some money when you go on vacation, you can pay to put your dog in a dog kennel for two weeks. 